Hi, uh, this is Dr. Michael Kelly. I am a podiatrist uh, licensed in the state of Michigan and I have a practice in uh, Rockford, Michigan. I've been in practice for uh, 20 years and uh, I have enjoyed doing the uh, hypocure uh, cytostar tarsi stent on my patients since 2007. The results have been outstanding and I'm also a, uh, a patient that has been uh, through the procedure and uh, the results on my left foot have been really good and I'm look forward, looking forward to the results on my right foot. I first learned about the Hypocure uh, uh, sinus tarsi stent uh, approximately four and a half years ago. I read it in an article uh, in a podiatry management mag magazine and I thought, boy, this, this sounds like something that I could use both possibly on myself and also my patients. So I uh, read the article, I, I uh, called the number that was on the uh, article got a hold of Dr. Graham and he was setting up these seminars where you could learn about this procedure. So um, I was able to uh, go there uh, July in uh, 2007, actually learn about this procedure and uh, worked on a cadaver and uh, then took that uh, information back to my practice and like anything new, um, I was kind of hesitant at first and I think all of us have that, have that problem. It, it's, we were never trained under this, you know, so, you know, to do it on a live patient, it's kind of nerve-wracking. But I realized that, you know, uh, sometimes the orthotics were not resolving their problems, and so I uh, started this procedure uh, October of 2007, and uh, I've probably done this on, I'm going to estimate, between 100 and 200 feet so far. And I have been overall very impressed with the results. Uh, I wouldn't say it's 100%, but I would say 90-some percent successful in the patients that I've done it on. This one lady in particular, she was probably in her uh, early 70s. And she came in with a lot of foot, knee, hip, and lower back pain. And um, she had been going to a chiropractor for, it seemed like, almost every other week because she constantly had pain in these areas. And so um, I said, you know, I've got this new procedure I'm doing. Um, would you be interested in it? And I went on to describe it, what it, uh, what it involves. And she was open to it. And uh, after the surgery, she did so well that she didn't have to go to the chiropractor anymore. And, and, and she hadn't even told the chiropractor at that point that she had had this procedure done, so I haven't talked to her since since then. But it was interesting that uh, she she had done so well that uh, she didn't have to go to the chiropractor. Well, what made me decide is um, I had been having uh, right hip pain for a number of years, probably since my early 40s, and um, I had had hip surgery. Um, they found a labral tear in my hip and also some hypertrophic bone. And so I had an orthopedic doctor go ahead and repair the tear and also uh, take out some of the bone that was in the hip joint. And when he got in there, he said, you know, your cartilage looks good in your hip joint. I think you're good to go. I don't think uh, you're going to ever need a total hip replacement. So that sounded like wonderful news to me. So. I was real good for about three years and then I started getting pain again in the hip and I thought, well, obviously that wasn't the solution to my problem so I started thinking, okay, what are some other things that I can be doing? And I had been wearing orthotics for years and I thought, you know, that, that if that was the problem that should have been doing it for me. So then I started thinking, well, maybe this stent would be able to control that foot from overpronating a lot better and as a result, resolve my hip pain. And so uh, that's why I decided I'd uh, go ahead and uh, go through with the uh, hypocure and see if that would resolve my pain. Uh, the so, vast majority of the patients have done very well with the hypocure. So that gave me the, the incentive, uh, you know, to the kind of the push to say, okay, I think it's, it's my turn now. Um, it, it was kind of achy and somewhat sore at first. But uh, I was amazed that I could walk on it right away. I was very hesitant about that, but 
it actually didn't feel too bad. And, uh, and then at about the, I would say the 10 day to 14 day period is when that, my left foot felt real good. And I was ready at that point to say, Dr. Graham, let's do the other one. But of course, with his schedule, I couldn't, I couldn't have it done at that time. But I was ready at about two week mark to have the other one done. That's how well I was doing. Um, it's interesting because I have had my patients stay off their foot for two weeks after the surgery. Uh, now, since I've gone through it, I think I'm going to actually have them walking on it sooner because uh, it's worked very well for me to, to start walking on it right away. I found mainly just with icing the foot, I didn't, I didn't have to use a lot of anti-inflammatory medication. I just went more by how it felt and it was feeling so good that uh, I, I really didn't have to use much anti-inflammatory medication. Yeah, it, it just, uh, and I had very, very little swelling with it. I, I was very surprised that I didn't have much swelling. Because I know some of my patients that that's been a problem with them, but I had little to no swelling. I feel like my foot is in a much better position now on my left foot, and that's why I'm anxious to have the other one done because I can feel the difference in my foot. You know, I don't feel like my my inside of my foot is totally collapsing down now. It actually makes me feel like I'm walking more on the outside of my foot, even though when I'm walking, I can tell my whole foot is making contact with the ground but it's just in a different part of my foot now, whereas before everything was just collapsing on the inside. Yeah.